you better work. Uh, we're <laughs> here to. T- <laughs> uh, so, in the last month, I've become increasingly addicted to RuPaul's Drag Race, a show that Scott has watched most of the seasons of, uh, and a bunch of you listeners enjoy as well. So, we figured season eleven just came out. Let's look at the the fifteen contestants. We'll break them down with our thoughts and feelings. This isn't going to be a weekly thing, but we might record a couple extra ones as like big episodes come up. Like the Snatch Game, I feel like would be a fun one to talk about afterwards because I fucking love the Snatch Game. Yeah. Um, but I'm just going to work them in order that they came into the uh, the workshop. All right. And this should be really entertaining because Scott knows more than anybody uh, that I struggle <laughs> with saying names. <laughs> so it's going to be good here we shit. Go. All right, so the first one I have down here is Vangie, um, who I haven't seen season 10, so I didn't know anything about her, but I kind of hated her as soon as she walked into the room. Yeah, I had not. I have not cool. watched season. I think the last season I saw was maybe nine, if not nine, then eight, and some of the All-Stars okay. ones. But yeah, I did not see season 10. I don't know who Vangie is, but she was pissing me off right off the rip. Right away, I disliked her. That being said... Once they started working in the workroom and they did a couple of like the one on one interviews, I warmed up a little bit to Vanjie. I don't love her, but I won't deny that I thought her outfit actually looked pretty good for the final runway. <laughs> uh, OK, so we're going to do this. This is going to happen a lot um, because I have face blindness. <laughs> um, <laughs> if you're going to uh, ask me, I don't remember. <laughs> OK, well, and these I, are I the notes that I had written down. So, because I remember, I remember who like six of these fifteen queens are. Um, everybody that's middle of the road, I am gonna have a hard time with. So, who was the first one that came in? So that was Ro- Vanji, and Vanji, Vanji, I, Vanji, I definitely don't see making it to the final three. I think Wait, she'll so be I'm... around until maybe the final six. <laughs> so Vanji is not on. Am I? Mi- oh, Vanjie, Vanjie Mateo. Yeah. Okay, uh, so I actually have the RuPaul's Drag Race fandom um, wiki up. <laughs> oh, Vanjie was one of the ones that was in the. Oh, we're gonna get there. She was one of the bottom three, right? Yeah, she was in the bottom yeah. three. Um, but I think that she did. She had like a cool little like cape thing with her gown. Um, she looked good. Eh, I, she, I, 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 as much as I, I disliked actually, her, she looked better than I thought. <laughs> Oh yeah, the joke is um the joke that they made at the end was uh I believe that the term that they used was a sea a slutty sea world worker. Something is that correct? like that. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that's what that yeah. that's what it was. Yeah, anyway, so uh, um yeah, she was she was not great. And she was annoying in the beginning, but she wasn't was- terrible in the middle. No, no, no. I think the middle really won me over with her a little bit. Mm-hmm. The second person who came in I loved immediately because Nina West says that her influences are the Muppets and Harvey Firestein. Yeah. And that's going to, that's going to grab me right out the gate. <laughs> yeah. I, actually. So Nina West is uh, from Columbus, Ohio. And she, as soon as the Muppet comment came out, I, was, I turned to Megan and I was like, Oh, this is Matt's favorite for sure. Well, so Nina, is so strange to me because I think she's the most experienced out of all the girls. Yeah, and she did a really shit job. (laughs) Yeah, she did a terrible job, and she seems so unsure of herself the entire episode. Um, I'm glad that they didn't let her go. I want to see her get at least one more opportunity to show any of that 14 years of experience. But, yeah, her outfit looked like she had never done drag in her life (laughs) when she came out. It was awful. What was so funny, though, is that – she tried out nine times. Nine, Rue, yeah. Rue was like, I have watched a lot of your uh, videos, uh, your application videos or whatever. And um, that's just weird, you know, to to, to get it wrong yeah. so many times. <laughs> and keep trying. I mean, keep I trying. Got to give them props, um, though, for, for not giving up. No, absolutely. You got it. If this is what you want to do, you chase it. You know what I mean? Uh, and and it's apparently, like me with podcast. <laughs> <laughs> but Nina West is like hot shit in Columbus. So I don't know. Nice. Um, the next person that came in was Sugar Kane, 
who I thought looked really great for only doing drag for a year and a half. Yeah, but she's um, annoying as Seaman. fuck. She, she, but she is not the most annoying person on this season. We will get to her. Yeah, yeah, we will get to her. Soon. But as, as soon as, as Sugar King came on, I was like, please stop talking. Yeah, I, I like the look that Sugar Kane has. Even on the final runway, I wrote down, I love this look. But Do you remember which look it was? Did, no, because I need to get better at actually writing down what the looks were. Uh, it's just in the spur of the moment typing to myself. Yeah, I, I want to say that Sugar Kane had one of those uh, dresses that's like a bodysuit with the flowing. Um, it's like a dress, like a full length dress, but it's more like a cape tuxedo tail kind yeah, of thing. Some, I think that she like might have been but, one of those. I think that I, she's another one that I could see being in the final six. I definitely don't think she's going to win it. No, she's not going to um, win, but she will make it relatively far, especially if she brings drama, because just so everyone knows, oh, they love I the drama. fucking hate drama. <laughs> it's, uh, on this show, they've, they've been manufacturing more and more drama every season, which is why I haven't watched at least the last season, if not the last two. Just FYI. So you're going to hear me bitch about that in any episode that we do about season 11. So, so we said that Sugar probably won't win this season but she's followed by someone who i think is one of the two people to beat this year and that's plastique tiara who just looks like a woman stunning yeah she's, yeah, she's like this here's the problem with these that that super pretty queen and i think that they actually mentioned something about that is that people don't take them seriously because they're like oh she's just a pretty face and that's happened a lot all of uh, pretty much every single season there's one woman that I, one queen that I'm like, Violet Chachki won. Vi oh yeah, Violet Chachki. <laughs> yeah, Megan just walked by and I was like, Violet Chachki won. Yeah, um, Violet Chachki was one of the most beautiful queens that the show has ever had. Not my ultimate favorite queen, but definitely in the top three and she won. But very often those women don't, or women, I'm sorry, those queens don't make it beyond <laughs> midway because they just don't have They've rested a lot on their looks and not on their comedic side. And Rue is awesome in that, where she's like, you need to be funny. You can't just yeah. be well, a that man that looks that like was... a really pretty woman. Well, and that was like what Courtney Ack's entire thing was, too, in season six, was Courtney Ack never stepped out of, like, I have the body of a beautiful woman. Like, that yeah, was her and, entire and thing. Courtney is goddamn gorgeous. Oh, absolutely. Uh, but yeah, Tiara, I really think is going to be in our final three unless, mm. you know, she really botches one of the um, one of the final runway situations, because I think that she has a good personality, too. But you're right. She's going to have to I don't know if she's funny. funny. Yeah, I don't think that she's got enough humor. So, I mean, I know it's a lot to, to, to assume from one episode, but I'm just thinking, like, if that's who this person is in the first episode, are they really going to, are they really going to bring a whole lot of personality? To, uh, I don't know. Well, uh, there, there are other people. Let's just say she's fine. She's very pretty. She's fine. She should, she should be around for a while. Yes. At the very least. Yes. And then let's go um, on to someone who I have well, stronger feelings about. <laughs> oh, dude, I, so the next person I walked in was Mercedes, who I, hate it immediately i think that she should have been in the bottom too i think that nothing she did was interesting um she had no direction during the first challenge yeah that, that's all. exactly what i was about to say is like i could not stand her face in that challenge uh, she's she's not she's okay so i know that gay culture is incredibly toxic as far as toxic masculinity goes. And so I'm trying to take that into consideration here, but this is also a super strong competition. It has, you know, millions of watches the first night every episode comes out. It's a big deal. Like RuPaul's Drag Race is huge. I don't think that Mercedes has what it takes to go more than two episodes. The character no, she has is, to be is in the bottom boring. Two next year. She's next not year. hot enough <laughs> to even get it to halfway through the season. She just well, doesn't have anything. And I, I adore Ben De La Creme. I always liked Ben De La Creme. Yeah. Ben there was nothing in her runway outfit that looked like Ben De La Creme. She, it looked like she just wore whatever she wanted to. It didn't even feel like she fulfilled what the recommendation was 
of the contest. Yeah, well, and that's also very frustrating for me because I wanted a lot more out of everyone. There was really only one person who wasn't even in the top three. Um, the only person that really, in my opinion, did the runway right. Um, well, actually, the person... Uh, we'll get to that. Uh, there were we'll, two people we'll that get, I think I, did I really, really I know really who you're well. going to talk to. There's one person who I do not like that much, but I think that she really brought it on the runway. And we'll get to her in a second. Uh, another person uh, I wrote down, uh, Scarlet Envy, great body, body, but I feel like I might end up hating her before the season's over. Yeah, Scarlet um, Envy is is actually the one who had that... The She got... Um, Oh, oh, Megan just reminded me. Scarlet Envy is the one that reminds me of Patrick Swayze in drag. In Tu Wong Fu. Because <laughs> the, the nice. man I looks, love, he's I got love. long hair and he looks like Patrick Swayze. And then when he dresses up as Scarlet I- Envy, she looks like a less masculine Patrick Swayze in Tu Wong Fu. <laughs> I still need to see Tu Wong You've Fu. You've never again. seen Tu Wong Fu? It is. I saw it once, and it's been years. I remember nothing about Too Wong Fu. It's really, really good. We just watched it last year. We watched it maybe a year into our relationship together because I watched it in high school. Didn't quite get it. I liked it because of John Leguizamo, but I didn't really get it. And then we watched it together, and um, it's such a good film. It's such a good flick. And it's got, right, I'll, I'll it's got it. um, Rizzo in it, man. Come on. Okay, fair enough. I did like Scarlet Envy's like kind of classy look on the runway that she mm-hmm. did. Like it was very like old thirties, which you know always is good in my book. <laughs> yeah, like uh, the so Hollywood Regency, let's say. Yes, yes, uh, but she was kind of a non-entity throughout most of the episode. Really, she I, she's kind of got an annoying personality. That uh, well, he does. Jacob James has yeah. an annoying personality because he thinks he's so hot. He is. That. <laughs> well, and that's the thing, as I feel like there's certain people, we'll get into one of them. There is someone uh, in this lineup where I did not like anything about their drag look, but every time they interviewed the person behind the drag, I was very charmed by them. Um, and that happens, I feel like, every season. There's like one person, I'm like, I don't like anything that you do, but I like the person that you are. Uh, but next up is Honey, probably the only Davenport. I actually kind of enjoyed. I liked the beehive inspired outfit that she walked in with. I I did not like um, that outfit. See, I like I, I like the way that it ties into the character. Right. Like, I mean, was, I liked the I liked the marketing. the concept, but I thought that it just didn't work. And I have down great outfit for her runway, but I can't remember what she wore, mm-hmm. so it must not have been that great. Yeah, we're gonna have to get better. About <laughs> I didn't take any notes, and I I messaged you last night. I was like, hey, you're gonna have to. You're going to have to help me, but you're doing a terrible right. job. I am sorry. Uh, so then here's where we're going to hit some some tough walks for me with names. Uh, Ahiria? Ahira? A- Akaria I Chanel think? Davenport? A- some, yeah, whatever yeah. that is. Uh, she, I wrote, she looks great, but I'm not sold on her personality. Is she the um, one that had the gigantic then... um, five wigs on? Yeah, and they loved her look, and it was my least favorite look of the runway. Oh, absolutely not for me. Uh, That was a great look. It was very middle of the road because we'll get to the person that is fantastic. But um, Akaria was – I think that her look was just the hair. I thought that the bodysuit was mediocre. Yeah, yeah, no, I agree with that. Okay, so here's here's one that I'm unsure of how I feel is – uh, Yavana, or I, I think I fucked that up, but she's basically the milk of this competition. She's the oh, super Ivy one. Oddly. Has, yeah, Ivy Oddly. I really like the weirdness, but that saran wrap dress on the no, runway did you nothing shut for your me. mouth? I thought that that should have gotten <laughs> uh, that she shouldn't have just been safe. She should have gotten a much better. Well, she, uh, she didn't do the highest, you know, the best. We'll get to that, but. Ivy Oddly's, um, the, it was like a Mr. Freeze thing going on. It was fantastic. I loved it. All right. I think so, it also takes a lot of balls so to go next, out without a wig on. This is true. And this, and I feel like that's something that a lot of like the weirder drag queens that I've seen on this show do, is they're not afraid to, to be a little bald in their presentation at times. Right. 
Um, so for the next person, I just need to say attitude check. <laughs> Fuck you, bitch. Or is that what this says? Um, yeah, silky, silky nutmeg yeah, ganache. When, she, when Silky first came out, I wasn't sure if I liked her, and then she pulled the cookie out of her bra and ate it, and I was like, okay, I kind of like this. But there's nothing going on with her drag. And then as the show progressed, I hated her more and more. They're making her the more. villain. That's the thing that I... Oh, they absolutely are. I, I I really have problems with how much they're presenting... They're trying to build characters from the get-go. And I don't like that. I want, I want it to be about the drag. I don't want it to be about the drama. And I really... I get that it's entertainment television and I don't watch reality TVs for this specific reason because I can't stand the manufactured drama. But I think that they're pushing her to be that character because I will be the first to say, I don't really get big queen, big drag queen drag. Like I don't gravitate towards it. I like the skinny guys dressed up as skinny girls because that's just kind of what I would th- there's just some sort of heterosexual male thing about that I'm sure but like also a lot of the ones that are larger queens they rely heavily on the humor aspect which is great but it also leads to some of the more cringeworthy moments in RuPaul history RuPaul Drag Race history and so I mean I loved Ginger Min she was one of my She's probably my favorite of the larger queens in general. I was, say, I like, was it Darian Lake? I think mm-hmm. it's yeah, he, six. Yeah, that she was, was great too. Girl. Yeah. But I mean, I like them, but, yeah, but I just don't think that. It's one note. <laughs> yeah, well, it's because it's, it's how can you want that queen that can do the glamour? And it's not that big girl glamour isn't a thing. It's just it's harder when you're a big man doing big yeah. girl <laughs> glamour. But I think that Silky Nutmeg Ganache will go very far for two reasons in this season one drama and two because she actually does very good drag and if she can bring that comedy into snatch game i loved her outfit in the runway i was surprisingly into it the runway was a lot better than when she walked in it looked like it was like a phoned in outfit right out the gate and i was like uh um i also like the way she pronounces over eats uber eats she says (laughs) Over at <laughs> yeah, she's like, very funny. That's the thing is like her humor is great, but they really pushed her to be an annoying character. That's not necessarily her. Yeah. They're saying play it up because that'll get ratings and you'll be the villain. Yeah. So they did with a door. I do. Yeah. Oh god, I was so upset when a door popped up during the the first challenge. Yeah, and I love I up. love a door Delano. Uh, well, I love her drag. <laughs> I love her character in small doses, but apparently she's not a great person. You know, when she's on tour and such. And she also really pissed me off in All-Stars when she came back and then immediately left. It just, it felt like manufactured drama. I'm going to be saying that a lot. I just don't like it. Uh, But I do also agree with uh, Tiara at one point kind of calls out Silky for caring way more about being memorable than actually winning the competition. Yeah, but I think that's Um, that's the producers telling them to do these things. It's really, I don't trust the show anymore. (laughs) <laughs> I, I just it makes me think a lot of um i never really watched the real world but you always hear about the cut the puck situation oh yeah in which there was basically you know there was a character who basically was like i know that i can become famous if i'm just over the top so let me do that um oh do you mean but the one that matthew lillard used as um his character's inspiration in 10 things or uh yes. she saw that <laughs> yes that's the one um <laughs> So now, now my favorite queen of this season, the one who I definitely see in the final three and could see winning it all, Brooklyn. She's winning. Who I just dude, think, she's oh, she, winning. <laughs> she's so just amazing. Just everything about her, is, yeah, like her runway, like that runway outfit was she, fantastic. She, the X Men outfit I always wanted. Yeah, there was a constant theme of like superhero kind of inspired. Uh, drag on this runway, actually. There was like three or four people yeah, that had the like... Poison Ivy cosplay. And then there was that uh, one. And then there was... Um... X-Men bodysuit and you said the Dr. Freeze yeah. uh, or Mr. That's Freeze kind of look. Ice to meet you! <laughs> <laughs> uh, so the next person 
Um, and I kind of have a like six degrees of separation to this person, apparently. Ariel, um, who I was not blown away for a person that they all seem to know. And then the more oh, that Ariel I watched, the more Versace. I disliked her personality. She's from Cherry Hill. I disliked her personality. Yeah, well, she's not only is she from Cherry Hill, she's apparently the ex-boyfriend of one of my best friend's coworkers. So like, <laughs> that's wild. They they yeah they were like yeah she was pretty sh- like she slash no you could say he are we were just talking yeah. about like pronouns with queens last night because I was trying to get the 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 lowdown on how I should be pronouncing it and um. So you are more than welcome to say he when you're talking about them out of drag, but I believe you're supposed to say she okay. when they're in drag. Then he apparently is an asshole yeah. <laughs> uh, in mm-hmm. real life. But I loved the – because I hated Astranja Aganja. Never was a fan. Yeah, really. Um, really. So taking the, taking the like pot obsession and twisting it into a Poison Ivy look was really fucking creative to me. So I, I have to give her credit for that. I could absolutely see her being in the final six as much as I don't want her to be. Yeah, yeah, I mean, she's okay. Um, she's another one of those ones that they're building up to have drama, so I'm trying to just be non-judgmental at the moment, but she could go and I wouldn't be sad. So uh, we have another Davenport with Raja D, um, who did not blow me away with her look, and her earrings kept falling off, and it just, she didn't seem like she belonged there. So they um, also do this, and I might be wrong in assuming this, but they always have one that kind of tries to be that, like, um, ratchety, low class kind of queen. And I get that that's, that they're trying to hit all the bases when they start the season with all of the tropes that, that drag really has but i always have a really hard time with those like adora was one of them too she was like i'm a chola blah like fuck you know like that's what her character was and it grates on me after a while because i feel like queens that do that like raja is that kind of queen so far that kind of queen relies on that for their humor and they can't do more than one joke and so it feels very one note so yeah. we'll see. I don't yeah, know. I, I agree with that. Yeah, I'm. I'm. You know what? I will say. No matter what, I'm. I'm immediately invested in enough of these queens that I'm excited to watch more of this season. Uh, we are greeted by Kahana, who I hated everything about. <laughs> see her leaving early. I really, really thought that she. Well, we'll get to the final elimination, but I really thought that um she should have gone home. Uh, well, uh, like Kahana on the runway. She had to lip sync for her life. Is that right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, maybe she. Was, oh, yeah. Yeah. Her her outfit was garbage. Yeah. She she had a terrible outfit and like. Oh, and wasn't we'll that supposed to be? Next, the last was that was that supposed to be Katya and her? I think so. Oh, I I've... only knew half of the people, so I couldn't compare. Um, but it was her. It came down to her. And the last person we have to talk about, which was Soho. Uh, Soju. Who I had, Soju, Soju. Uh, who I had mixed feelings about. Um, and at first I wrote down, I feel like she'll be short-lived and I'll probably forget about her right before she's eliminated. <laughs> but through, <laughs> yeah, through the interviews with her, though, I was really charmed. Um, I There was a point where she said something about one of the, one of the guys when they were all getting undressed. And then in the interview, she goes... Oh God, I sound so thirsty. Yeah. <laughs> like she just had a she had a very funny, kind personality, mm-hmm. and I think I she was a little too to real. More. She was too. That's the thing, and she was a super fan. She's a yeah. girl who runs a, a RuPaul Drag Race reaction show on YouTube. So, like, you know, this will be great for her numbers. I'll probably check out her channel because of this. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I agree, like, her outfit was too much. She did way too much. I hated the blue lipstick that she had on. And when they were, like, doing their interviews with people and give, she was doing the sympathy thing, which I can't stand. Yep. I hate when they're like, oh, well, you know, I had a cyst and blah, 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 blah. But it made blah, a really blah. funny like, joke. It did. It led to some really funny My jokes. My sisters. Um, and this also leads into Kahana, who I also thought when they asked her about being – in the bottom three or whatever, she just talked too much and there never felt like realness to it. Whereas like when they talked to Nina, 
I felt the realness of her sadness of completely botching it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I was like, I believe that she wanted to do this right and just could not do it. Whereas Kanye just felt like she was making up excuses. Um, and then when it came down to the lip sync for your life, like Kahana had all of the energy in the world, but I just thought that Sojo did a better lip sync. She, she just felt like it matched the energy of the song versus Kahana, who was just doing fucking flips and splits and shit. But that's what happens uh, in every lip sync when it's a super athletic queen versus a more middle of the road queen. They're just like, fuck, I got to win. I'm going to do some splits. But also Soju, I saw her mess up some of the lyrics. So I know that didn't help. This is true. Well, I mean, how many Hannah Montana songs do you know all the words to? That's the thing is I don't know any of these goddamn songs that they sing. <laughs> Um, I will say a few other notes that I have is I do think I could see, uh, Sojo being back for like an all-star season or something like that. Cause I think that she did they use the one episode back. she was on to make an impression. I was, I wrote down, I think she could be back for season 12. Either. No, no, no. I mean, I think they might um, bring her back later on this season. season. Ooh. They, they've I mean, done we'll that see. before. It, no, oh, I've seen it happen. It confused the hell out of me <laughs> in season three, honestly. <laughs> that person came back just to get eliminated that same episode yeah <laughs> so, <laughs> but uh i do want to just call out a few things i loved the theme of this episode i love the like the haunting of like queen's past and like having all these queens come back like raja and stuff like that and then the like the first contest being applying past queen all-stars to your look and stuff like that i just thought it was a very cool theme for the first episode of this season um, and I actually didn't hate Miley Cyrus too much as a guest Miley judge. Was I actually, actually thought her very doing it fun. Was yeah, and she okay. Yeah. I have never been, I, never in my life until last night have I ever uttered the words "Miley Cyrus is gorgeous." And then I saw yeah. her in her in her her glamorous look for the the final runway, and I was like, "God damn!" And she's very yeah, self deprecating. Something... I loved it. Yeah, I was going to say, ever since, so, like, the, from the career that I followed Molly Cyrus, because my sisters were the right age for Hannah Montana, sure. you know, she was, she did the Disney child thing, mm. and then she went off the deep end and started hanging out with, like, the Flaming Lips and doing all this, like, heavy LSD-inspired rock, and now that she's kind of moved away from going so far in that direction, she's just kind of in the middle, she's such a likable person now, because she's so self-aware of those two drastic sides that she did that like now it's just this is who she actually is and i really like who she actually is well, that's cool i didn't know that about her and the flaming lips but that's also because i don't like the flaming yeah, lips. They did, yeah they did a very very bad album together <laughs> where it was the flaming lips doing all the music and molly cyrus doing most of the vocals and they did a front to back cover of sergeant pepper's lonely hearts club band like the album that's but a real bad idea just in that weird yeah, that weird flaming lip style where it was just like, this is a nightmare. It was a nightmare of an album. And I think that was right when she was like, I shouldn't hang out with these guys. <laughs> I should probably give up on the drugs. <laughs> yeah, but I will say the album that she did when she was all on that ecstasy is actually, if you're into dance music, it's got some bangers. Wait, what, what, <laughs> what record did she do on ecstasy? Uh, it was the one that had like, I came in like a wrecking ball. Okay, so she was on ecstasy so when she did that the, record? That, yeah, like uh, that was when she was hanging out with the Flaming Lips and doing all types of shit. Okay. But like the, the opening single there was all about like partying on Molly. <laughs> like, like it was it was an interesting switch from like you can get the best of both worlds, Hannah Montana. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I, I, I am excited for this season. I'm excited to see what happens in this season. Um, you, like I said, my my final two, I really think are going to be Tiara and, and Brooklyn. Um, but I'm curious if, if yours is the same or if you've got other people in mind. Well, mine's definitely Brooklyn because she is tall as fuck. <laughs> she is very creative, <laughs> has been very creative. I loved her Mountie outfit. Um, just, you know, I, as long as she can keep up being positive because I fucking hate when somebody is a negative queen and then wins. That just bugs the shit out of me um, because it's really like the whole point of the show is if you can't love yourself, how the it's hell are you going to love someone else? And so when those when those really th – that's why I hate the drama because I feel like it goes counterintuitive 
It's contrary to the whole point of the goddamn show. So anyway, I think that she'll. Yeah, well, that's what pissed me off with season two when when Tyra Sanchez won. And I was just like, you're the shittiest person this entire season. Just a shitty attitude the whole time. It made me so angry. Yeah, yeah I can't stand that. So I think that she'll she'll win. I think that we'll see a lot of um, uh, Ivy oddity because she's our season's Katya. Uh, and I love Katya. Um <laughs> I uh, I don't know who else. Um, I know Ariel Versace will stick around because she's just one of those, you know, she'll just she'll be good enough. And I really do think that um, uh, Nutmeg will will be there for a lot. Yeah, I, she might not be top three, see, but she'll be top six. I was gonna say I could see her making the top six, but I want. I want her to provide some more stuff that makes me feel like she deserves to be there beyond just the the drama. But I, I, you know I mean, that's like, what I'm that's my argument here is I think that they did that to set her up as a villain or as an annoying character. And then she gets this weird redemption arc where she's like, oh, I need to be more than just obnoxious. I don't know. I, I feel like there's that possibility there. Um, and I'm excited to see. So. Uh, this is kind of it for the RuPaul Drag Race talk. Um, like I said, maybe we'll come back for like one of the big like Keystone episodes like the Snatch Game or something like that. But otherwise, we'll we'll be back when it's probably down to the final three and discuss how we felt about the season and or whatever. But, you know, don't expect this every week on your feet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're not that crazy uh, to like be doing regular episodes, bonus episodes, and then RuPaul episodes for three months holy shit yeah yeah well rudy josh <laughs> this one's for you guys <laughs> we tip our mounty hats to you <laughs> uh and i mean i keep saying this at the end of episodes but this one really is the last episode that will be on your feed before we're at monster mania so you know if you're in that cherry hill area come check us out otherwise just like, share, subscribe on the feeds, and we will always be here every Friday with some new content. Bye. You're listening to the Geekscape Network.